hope you are doing super well and in this video I'll be giving you some information on how do you analyze performance measures so this information again is taken from the BA Bob guide and without any delay let's get into it so why do you even want to analyze performance measures so if you haven't seen my previous video on how to measure solution performance then you should take a look at that video and then get back to this because only then you would know why you should be analyzing performance measures okay so in a short uh, note I would tell you why we need to measure this it's to provide insights into the performance of a solution in relation to the value it's going to bring okay so we would have built a solution and we anticipated certain value that the solution needs to be to giving us okay so to analyze what exactly is that performance we need to perform this analysis um, activity so the performance measures themselves very rarely they trigger any decision about the value of a solution meaning that when you look at a performance measure a KPI you just don't get any insights you don't get that decision okay this is something that we're supposed to change or we are supposed to you know rectify this this is something that we shouldn't be doing you do not get that amount of information just by looking at that performance metrics that calls for a necessity to analyze as well as to interpret that information so always when you do analysis when you want to get insights when you want to understand what is happening you always need to do some amount of analysis and interpret what story that data is telling us and that's what we do when we analyze performance measures so by now I think you would have got some understanding why we should be doing this analysis and when you are going to do this analysis you need to keep in mind two things the very first one is the potential value so what does this potential value tell us it describes the value that may be realized by implementing the proposed future state okay so the potential value of our solution that we need to keep in mind and the second thing is the solution performance measures so as we seen in the previous video on these performance measures you would have now collected all that information so these measures are going to provide us with the information as to how well the solution had been performing and what could be the potential performance that we could see with the solution okay these two things you need to keep in mind and now when you're going to perform that analysis there are certain things that you should consider okay the very first one is solution performance versus the desired value that we are looking at the second one is you want to look out for if there are any risks okay in what performance we are analyzing you want to check out what are the trends that exist you want to check the accuracy of the information and the performance metric information and also you would want to check out the performance variance so let's see each thing one by one the very first one is to compare the solution uh, performance with the desired versus the desired value so there are two things that you would be able to see if you see the first one is if the solution would be high performing okay but though it is high performing it may not be of high value to the business okay it might be still providing very low business value in that case you may be you need to start collecting more metrics in order to justify the value that the solution is providing to the business if at all you feel that there are no more measures we are not able to measure then probably there is going to be a solution risk because if you can't test whether a particular solution is actually providing value to the business or not then that's definitely a risk how do you take decisions whether you want to continue to invest in that solution or whether you should be doing away with that solution so that is a risk and you need to treat this risk as any other risk and you need to try to mitigate that risk okay the second scenario that we see when we are trying to Un, un, analyze and understand this is a solution might be of a low performance but it might be providing high business value so for example you might implement a process but that process may not be very effective okay at that time it though it's not effective still it might be you know providing business value 
So in those cases, you might want to improve the effectiveness of that process or the solution so that the business value could still be improved. Okay. So these are the two, two things you need to start looking out for as the first one. The second one is you would want to start analyzing trends in the data. So as a business analyst, you need to consider the time period when the data was collected to guard against any anomalies or skewed data or any biases. Okay. So as I mentioned in the previous video, you might collect data. And if that data is going to have some bias, if it is not exactly the right sample along with the sample size, you might land up with anomalies and skewed data, especially when you're doing any analysis. So when it coming on to trends, so you need to even watch out for the time period. Let's say you're kind of, you know, uh, wanting to track the number of sales. If you track the sales during a particular season, during a festival season, the sales might be really high and that could lead to some misinterpretation or misunderstanding of the situation and the case because maybe your sales may not be as high when compared to the ordinary times as to the festival times so you always need to look out for the trends and even the time period when that data was collected the second one is as i said make sure that your sample size is sufficient and it's not misleading the next one is to check for the accuracy of the data. So it's very important, especially when you're doing not only, you know, performance measures, but whatever analysis that you're doing, it's very important that you know that your data is clean and accurate. Because if your data is accurate, you, you can really rely on that data to make business decisions. But if that data is really skewed and you cannot rely on that data, it's going to be inaccurate. The business would be making really blunders in their decisions okay so make sure that the data is accurate so how do you make sure that that data is accurate so the business analysts need to test and analyze the data collected is going to have a lot of accuracy so to say that data is accurate and reliable to consider that it should be the results of that performance measure should be reproducible and repeatable so there was once a scenario when the organization and organization was, um, you know, tracking certain amount of metrics. And one metric was kind of looking really, you know, um, not accurate. It, the teams were not really satisfied with that metric. They felt that there might be some issue with that metric and the calculation. So when we really connected with the business owners, we they, they told us clearly, you know, at which situation that metric gets captured, what is the logic behind that metric and what is the, you know, calculation formula for that metric. And when it was reproduced, teams were really convinced that you know metrics yes that data is accurate and then they started taking action and they found out the root cause so always a particular um, you know um, metric you should be able to reproduce that and repeat that in order to test out the accuracy and reliability and the last one this always gets me especially when i see the expectations versus the reality but the last one is to check for performance variances now what is performance variances we would actually seen that in a lot of memes okay so the difference between the expected versus the actual performance is going to represent that variance and that variance is something that we need to analyze for this uh, analyze and see how well we can mitigate that uh, you know um, and solve that particular variance so when you're addressing this variance there are two things that you need to do the first one is you want to do a root cause analysis to see why is our solution not as expected why what is blocking the solution from reaching its utmost potential so when you do a root cause analysis you of course you'll get a lot of insights from that activity and once you have that information with you then the second thing that businesses would do is they would recommend you or you need to you know get put with the stakeholders and decision makers in order to understand what would be the next set of actions that need to be taken in order to reduce the variance so that the solution performs as to what the business expects and it's providing and it's also giving the business value to the, the business value as expected okay so 
these are the things that you need to keep in mind when you're analyzing performance uh, measures. So I hope that you got some information on how you do this analysis. If you found this video helpful, please do give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to this channel and also do, do, do share your feedbacks. Thank you.